Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. During the early Permian, the synapsids continued their rise to dominance in an increasingly arid world. As detailed in the previous video in this series, these animals diverged from the reptilian sauropsids during the second half of the Carboniferous period, producing a number of basal groups such as the pin-headed cassisaurs and the carnivorous ophiacodontids. Recent studies have suggested that synapsids developed elevated metabolisms relatively early in their evolutionary history, with it being proposed that even basal forms possessed smooth, glandular skin, lacking in scales or scutes. Females probably laid soft, leathery-shelled eggs, similar to those of modern monotremes, which explains their rarity in the fossil record. Early forms probably also lacked hairy coats, with this feature developing in the more derived therapsids as demonstrated from evidence preserved in coprolites. The cassisaurs and ophiacodontids were successful during the earliest Permian, but were soon displaced by more derived synapsid lineages. A notable example within the large herbivore guild were the adaphosaurids. This group first appeared during the late Carboniferous approximately 304 million years ago, with the early members of the group being generally small and lizard-like animals. As far as we know, all members of Adaphosauridae appear to have possessed large frills that run along their backs and were supported by bony projections of the vertebral column. The purpose of these structures has long been debated, with a thermoregulatory function seen as most likely for decades. Although more recent studies have questioned this, seeing the sails as forms of species recognition and being useful for mating displays. One of the oldest known genera, the Anthosaurus, was a rather unspecialized animal about the size of a small dog. Known from late Carboniferous rocks of Kansas, this animal possessed teeth indicative of an insectivorous diet and lacked the adaptations for herbivory seen in more derived adaphosaurids. Much like the cassisaurs, it would seem that this family started out as small and generalized predatory forms. Other early genera, such as the German Bohemi clavulus, are known only from single vertebral spines, so little can be said about their potential lifestyles. The more derived Gordodon from the early Permian of New Mexico is represented by a well-preserved specimen consisting of approximately the first quarter of the animal. Gordodon is unusual among early synaptids for its teeth, which were arranged similarly to those of modern mammals, and unlike the simple, uniform, lizard-like teeth of other early herbivorous synapsids. It had large incisor-like teeth at the front of the jaws, followed by a prominent gap between them and a short row of peg-like teeth at the back. The unique jaws and teeth of Gordodon among early synapsids suggest that it was one of the first herbivorous tetrapods to have specialised in selectively feeding on high-nutrient, low-fibre plant matter, a niche that would later be taken up by the Dicynodonts. Measuring about 1.5 metres or 4.9 feet long, this smallish animal would have fallen prey to predatory synapsids such as the Ophiacodontids. Other Adaphosaurids adapted to a herbivorous diet in rather different ways. The famous genus Adaphosaurus was a good example, first appearing in the late Carboniferous of North America and Europe roughly 303 million years ago. This was a successful animal that persisted for almost 30 million years and gave rise to five known species. Like other members of its family, Adaphosaurus would have resembled a large sail-backed lizard in life, although possessing semi-erect limbs and lacking scales. The different species ranged in size from 1.6 to 11.5 feet long, with the largest, E. pogonias, weighing up to 300 kilograms or 660 pounds. All species were small skulled animals, with their craniums appearing triangular when seen from above. The deep lower jaw likely had powerful muscles, and the marginal teeth along the front and sides of the jaws had serrated tips, helping Adaphosaurus to crop bite-sized pieces from tough terrestrial plants. Back parts of the roof of the mouth and the inside of the lower jaw held dense batteries of peg-like teeth, forming a broad crushing and grinding surface. In life, Adaphosaurus would have been preyed upon by members of a closely related but slightly more derived lineage of synapsids, the Sphenacodontids. Also originating during the latest Carboniferous, these animals would also have closely resembled the Adaphosaurids in many ways, including the possession of large sails that ran along the backs of some species. However, the oldest members of Sphenacodontidae seem to have lacked large ostentatious sails. 
This applies for the genus Sphenacodon itself, which dwelt in the southwestern United States from the late Carboniferous to early Permian, thriving for 20 million years. Possessing a tall, blunt skull that was equipped with an array of powerful teeth, divided into sharp, pointed pre-caniniforms, large, stabbing caniniforms, and smaller, slicing back teeth. The body was stocky and robust, with a row of enlarged neural spines forming a low, sail-like ridge along the back. Fossil trackways suggest that Sphenacodontids walked in a semi-erect posture, similar to that of the high walk of modern crocodiles and alligators. Another genus, Cutlaria, lacked any form of sail at all, while many Permian forms possess large and elaborate neural spines that would have been covered by a layer of skin. The genus Secodontosaurus was a good example of this. Known from the early Permian of Texas, this animal's skull was noticeably more slender and elongated than in other members of Sphenacodontidae. With a prominent sail and an overall maximum length of 2.7 metres, or 9 feet, this carnivore hunted in a manner different to its blunt-jawed relatives, although exactly what its environmental niche may have been is debatable. It has been suggested that Secodontosaurus's elongated jaws were adapted for probing into burrows and crevices in search of small prey. By far the most famous Sphenacodontid was the well-known genus Dimetrodon, one of the largest known predators of the early Permian. The most massive species could measure over 13 feet long and weighed in at 250 kilograms or 550 pounds, about the size of a large African lion. Often mistaken for a dinosaur by the general public, Dimetrodon and relatives were far more closely related to mammals like you and I, despite their vaguely reptilian appearance. The synaptid identity of this animal is confirmed by the presence of a single opening at the rear of the skull, and in its possession of caniniform teeth, the precursors of mammalian canines. The skull was robust and naturally compressed, capable of driving the finely serrated teeth into the flesh of its prey. The sail was large and covered by a thin layer of skin, with this structure being poorly adapted as a thermoregulatory organ, with a role in sexual display being more likely. Although no skin impressions attributable to Dimetrodon have been found, it is possible that the genus possessed smooth, glandular and hairless skin. Like other members of its family, the limbs were probably held in a semi-erect stance, with the belly and tail being kept above the ground when walking. Clearly a highly successful predator, up to 14 species are known that spanned a wide range of sizes, with the smallest species such as the German D. Teutonis being about the size of a small dog. Dimetrodon persisted in North America and Germany between 295 and 272 million years ago, and inhabited a fertile, swampy environment, providing plenty of food for this carnivore. A significant amount of the animal's diet may have been composed of temnospondyls such as Eriops, with direct evidence of Dimetrodon preying on the Lepospondyl diplocorlus, represented by three partially eaten specimens of the latter, which were uncovered by Robert Barker at a site in Texas. Shed teeth present at the scene of the crime confirm the sail-backed predator as the culprit. Although highly successful in its time, Dimetrodon and the Sphenacodontids as a whole died out by the Middle Permian, probably due to competition with a more derived clade of synapsids the increasingly mammal-like therapsids. It would be within this broad lineage that the more erect body postures would emerge, as well as the first instances of true body hair and complex differentiated teeth. Interestingly, elaborate sails would never develop again within the synapsids. Thanks for watching everyone. The next video will be covering the early evolution of pinnipeds and their relatives. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.